Hi, my name is Sam Hendrick and I'm from Bentley Systems and congratulations, you made it to the fifth video in what was going to be a series of six, but we found out there was just too much good stuff. So we made a seventh video. So watch for that. Now in this video, we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about reference files, how to attach 3D and 2D reference files, and then we're going to talk about how do we create a PDF. Now we'll talk about creating a PDF in a 2D world, which most of you probably have already done. Then we're going to talk about how do we take a 3D model and how do we make a 3D PDF from that. Oh, that's going to be fun. I bet you didn't know we could do that. So let's not waste any more time. Jump right into the video. This first part is going to be attaching reference files. Now we are going to work in a file that comes with the example work set. I have modified it. The only thing I did was detach the reference files so I can demonstrate how to attach reference files. So it's called visualization underscore master. And once the file opens up, you're going to see that the file is currently empty. Now this is a 3D file and I will be attaching 3D reference files. Now in the upper left corner, my workflow is currently set to drawing and there's a tab that says primary. And here's an option that says attach tools. If I click the down button, you're going to see there's four possible choices. We're going to be looking at references. I'm going to select this. This will open up the reference file dialog box. Currently, there are no reference files attached, so you're not seeing anything in the list box below. We are going to be attaching reference files. So there's an icon right here, attach reference. I'm going to click this. Now, this dialog will always open in the last place that you attached a reference file. For me, that's this folder, 3D model. Now, before we actually select the reference file, I want to take a moment and talk about this dialog. At the bottom, these are the different types of files that you can attach as reference files. So you can see it's plentiful. There's lots of options here. In addition to just MicroStation files, I can do AutoCAD files. I can do 3D Studio files, Shape files, uh, NURB files, SketchUp files, Reality Mesh. So these are all the the different formats that you can attach pretty much everything you can think of so I'm going to dismiss that now in the upper right corner here you're going to see attachment method right now it's set to interactive there are a number of other options we're going to be choosing interactive I'm going to explain what that is we'll go through that and then after we see that we're going to be going back and choosing coincident world to attach multiple so I'm going to leave that set to interactive the file that I'm going to attach it's called platform I'm going to click open on this dialog, which is the reference attachment properties, up at the top, we'll take a quick tour here where it says model. There's only one model inside the file, so it only gives me that option. If the file I was attaching had multiple models, then I could choose from them. In this case, I only have one. Logical name, this is an optional thing unless you attach a file, the same file, more than once. Logical name, you can determine what it is and you can name it whatever you want and that can often be helpful. Down below, the orientation. In this case, I'm going to be choosing Coincident World. Now, this is something you would want to check with your organization, what they recommend you do. In this case, I'm going to be doing Coincident World. Down below, we're not going to be changing anything, but I want to touch on detail scale. Now, we're attaching a one-to-one -one model, so we're not changing the scale here. If I was attaching a detail, then I could change the scale that I'm attaching the reference file at. Also down below there's scale master ref and then below this is nesting attachments. There's three choices, no nesting, live nesting, and copy attachment. No nesting means that if the file I'm attaching has reference files attached, do not attach them. Live nesting means if the file I'm attaching has reference files, then attach them and there is a nested depth. I can tell it how deep in that hierarchy do I want it to go. Copy attachment looks at the hierarchy, but then directly attaches the reference files. So we're going to be doing no nesting, and I'm going to leave the rest of the settings set. I'm going to click OK. There you can see there's the platform. On the reference file dialog box, you can see there's a number of columns. We're going to touch on some of these. The first one is slot. That's just the order in which it was attached. Second one is status. Now, if I attach a reference file, that file could be opened by somebody else and they could be working on it. As soon as they make changes to that file, then I will see a pencil icon appear here, letting me know that the file that I've referenced has been changed. Now there's no action required on my part. Third column, this is for active status. Now you can activate a reference file to make changes to it. If you don't activate it, then you're not able to make changes to the elements in that file. Now the rest of the columns are self-explanatory, file name, model name, attachment or description, and then orientation. Then at the end, there's three checks. These checks, basically the first one is going to be display. If I uncheck this, 
It turns off the display of the reference file. If I check it again, I see the reference file. This turns it off completely. The second check is snap. I can turn on or off the ability to snap. And the third check is what we call locate. If that is checked, that means that I can copy elements from the reference file into my active. If it's unchecked, I will not be able to copy elements from the reference file into my active. Now these options here, there's more down below, but we're gonna move on. We're gonna be attaching four other reference files. So I'm gonna go back to my attach. Now at this time, I told you we chose interactive because I wanted to walk through that dialogue. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be choosing four reference files and we're gonna be using coincident world for all four because we don't wanna see that interactive dialogue. We don't need to. The only thing we were gonna be choosing was gonna be coincident world. So we're gonna choose that. And now I'm going to select multiple reference files. I'm gonna select track. I'm gonna hold down my control key. I'm gonna do track canopy. I'm gonna do ventilation. And the last one is gonna be visualization architectural. Again, I'm holding down the control key, allowing me to select multiple reference files. And because I've chose attachment method, coincident world, it will skip the other dialog and just attach them automatically. I'm gonna click open. And now you can see the other four reference files were all attached. Now I'm gonna zoom out a bit. Now, if I select one of these reference files, you're going to see this magenta box appear. This is appearing because the highlight mode is set to boundaries. Now, if I want to turn that off, I can set it to none. Or if I want to set it to highlight, I can set it to highlight all the elements in the selected reference file. And you can see all the elements in that reference file selected are now highlighted. Now, this can be really helpful for identifying which elements are in which reference file. So if I choose ventilation, you can see all the ventilation reference file elements are highlighted, making it very easy to identify the individual components of a reference file. So this is the basics of attaching a reference file. In this case, it's a 3D model. What I'm going to show you next is a different environment. So I'm going to be attaching basically in a civil environment, topo, alignment, things like that. So I'm going to close this file, go to file and go to close. Now I have not exited the program. I just closed the file. I'm going to be opening up a different file here. This file has an alignment in it. This is a civil example. Now the file I'm in is a 2D file and I'm going to be attaching some other reference files. So I'm going to go back to my reference file dialog box. Again, the icon is right up here. The reference file dialog box appears. Again, I have nothing attached. I'm going to choose my attach reference. It always goes to the last place you attached. Well, that's not the current directory that I'm in. This is a feature in MicroStation because when you attach reference files, you often are attaching from the same location. In this case, I'm gonna go to a different folder. I wanna go to my current project folder. So in the upper right corner, there's a little icon. It's a yellow folder with a blue star. If I click on this, it's gonna show me a history of the folders that I've attached reference files in. And and the very first one is always going to be your current directory. So I'm going to select this. It will switch to my current directory. Now the files that I want to attach are going to be this file, which is going to be the topo. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to be doing what I did before, holding down the control key. I want to get the right away also. So I'm going to select that. And then the attachment method, you can see it remembered from the prior exercise, the coincident world. So we're going to stick with that and we're going to click open. And now you see I have the reference files attached and I've got topo and I have my right of way and I'm going to zoom in on this area right here because one of the other things we're going to talk about here is once you have a reference file attached, oftentimes what you want to do is clip out and only see a certain part of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be placing in a fence and I'm going to then do a clip boundary on my reference files, both the topo and the right of way. So to get to my fence tool, I'm going to come up here under selection. I'm going to select place fence. On the tool settings window, my option right now, the method is set to type shape. I'm gonna set this to block just to make a simple example. And I'm gonna place a rectangular fence starting right up here, left click data, drag my cursor down, left click data. Now I have a fence boundary on my reference file dialog box. I will select the files that I want to clip. In this case, I want to clip both of them. So I'm gonna select the first one. And again, you see the highlight mode is set there. And I'm gonna hold the control key down and select the second one also. Now there's an icon right here, clip reference, scissors next to the file paper, clicking that. On my tool settings window, I have methods. I have a fence active, so there's my fence. And I can also do it by element or if I had a named fence. In this case, I don't have a element to select or I don't have a named fence, so I'm gonna choose active fence. Now, all I need to do is do a left click or data to accept this. 
and you can see what I've done is clipped my reference files. Now, I don't need to see the reference files highlighted, so right now that both of them are selected below, if I click in this open area, you can see it unselects them, therefore the highlight mode is not working. So now I only see this area. Now the last thing we'll talk about here is how do we turn off individual levels within the reference file. So I'm going to go to my level display. Again, up here I'm in the drawing workflow. Under primary, there's level display. This will show me the levels of my active file and of each reference file that's attached. So as an example, if I go to this file, which is my topo, I can see all of the levels for that reference file. Now you're gonna see one here called contours. Right now, this level is turned on because it has a blue background with white text. If I click on it, left click, that will turn off the contours. You can also see there's other levels existing man-made. I turn that off and I can also turn off existing vegetation. So as I turn these levels off, they're no longer displayed here. I'm not turning off the entire reference file. That's a little bit different. Now, if I wanted to turn them all back on at once, I can, with my cursor over this list box, right click on my mouse. There's an option here, all on. I can turn all the reference files back on at one time. Now, there is another way for me to turn off levels by picking them. Again, in this dialog, if I right click on my mouse, there's an option here, it says off by element. This will put me in a tool called change level. The level option is display off. If I click on an element and I'm gonna move my cursor over here and pick one of these contour lines, by me doing a left click or data, I'm telling it turn off that level. So that's a quick way for you to turn levels off. So this hopefully will show you some basics about attaching reference files in a 3D and also in a 2D environment. Hey, I just wanted to jump in before we get into the PDF section here. I want you to know that MicroStation has Adobe Acrobat Writer written into the software. So you don't need to have Adobe Acrobat Writer or other software to create a PDF with MicroStation. Just make sure you use one of our plot drivers the one that ships with the software, it's called PDF.PLTCFG. Your organization may have renamed it, but it will let you generate from MicroStation a PDF. So let's continue on. Okay, in this final section, we're gonna talk about printing in MicroStation. And we're gonna see two examples, printing typical civil engineering layout sheet, and we're also gonna see printing a 3D file. I'm gonna open up this file right here. And you can see the file is opened up. You notice that there is, looks like a floating piece of paper. That's because this is a sheet model. If you have a sheet model, you will not have to place a fence to define the print area. You can use the sheet boundary to do that. And that's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna to go to my print dialog, and there's two ways to get to it. One is going to the back office. So I'm gonna go up to file, click file, come down to print. And you're gonna see print. And I've got several options. First one is print, the next one is print preview, and then third you see print to PDF. Now we are gonna be printing to a PDF, but we're gonna be using the first option here. So I'm gonna select this, the print dialog opens up. I've selected a plot driver, a PLT CFG file that I've modified. What I did was I turned on the ability to have MicroStation export out the layers from the file into the PDF, and I wanna demonstrate that. So now I've choose the paper, in this case it'll be ANSI D. The size is 34 by 22. The area that I have selected, or or was selected by the sheet tells it it's going to be a 100 foot scale drawing that's preset there's three variables there's paper there's area and there's scale you choose two the other one's a byproduct in this case i'm going to go ahead and hit print to file it's going to ask me where i want to put this i'm going to put this on my desktop here and i'm going to click save down on my status bar i can see there it tells me it's created i'm going to switch to my desktop here is my pdf i'm going to open it up I'm opening this up with Adobe Acrobat Pro. Now you can open this with any Adobe Acrobat Reader, whether it's from Adobe or not. Because I exported out the layers, on the left here, you'll see layers. If I click here, I can then expand out looking at the different reference files and the levels in my active file. So I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out. You can see there's the reference files and I can just go ahead and turn off like the Adobe Eyeball, turn on, turn off from the PDF. So MicroStation has this built into it. You don't need Adobe Acrobat Writer, it's built into MicroStation. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to MicroStation. I'm gonna close this file. Now the other file I wanna show you is a 3D file. I'm gonna do a file close and I'm gonna choose a different file. It's called Vault Detail. This is one that we'd seen in a prior video. 
Now this is a 3D model that I have. And what I wanna show you is if I print a PDF, I have an option because this is a 3D file to make it a 3D PDF. And I wanna demonstrate that. So I'm going to go to my print and I'm gonna do that by doing the keyboard shortcut, Control plus P. Now it remembers my last plot driver. Now, because this is a 3D file, you're gonna see an option here called print to 3D. So I'm gonna check that and I'm gonna say print to file. It's gonna ask me where. I'm gonna place this on my desktop. It tells me it's done. Again, I'll switch back to my desktop. Here's the PDF. I'm gonna open this up. Now you see these controls. You can see I've got options, for example, I've got the option to change the way it's displayed. I also can change different settings here. And if the file has saved views in it, I can see it here. I can say, show me front. It'll show me the front. Or I can hold the left button down and I can rotate the view. If I scroll the wheel, I'm zooming in and zooming out. So this is a PDF created from MicroStation with 3D file turned on. Now there's an, one more option I wanna show you. It's called cross-section properties. So I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna say, I want to enable cross-section. It starts off by showing a cross-section of Z value. So I'm gonna say, let's change that to Y or let's go to X. Here you can see I have a cross-section of my vault in the PDF and down here, position and orientation, I can slide this along just by grabbing this and I can slide it along so we can change where the cross section is. So that's printing a 3D PDF from MicroStation. Pretty cool, huh? Hey, we'll see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.